everybody doing today please allow me to reintroduce myself my name is brandon bravon towns host of that show called sports plus life that their sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary topics in sports and all of the necessary topics in life and it is a gorgeous spring monday here in the richmond va i hope everybody enjoyed their weekend i hope everybody enjoyed their heat their easter excuse me let me wish you guys a happy belated easter and for all the kids who were on spring break time to go back to school niggas (laughs) time to go back to school excellent you had nine days weekends included of driving somebody up the wall no i'm just joking like real talk um, my kids enjoyed their spring break. They didn't. Um, they didn't. Well, they didn't drive me crazy. You know, they didn't. They were. You know, we went to the park. Um, they rode some bikes. We were active. They had a good spring break. The Easter egg hunt, all of that good stuff at the church. And um, speaking of church, yesterday was the first time I had sung with the uh, choir at St. Paul's in three years, and it's crazy because. Gosh, that three years went by so fast when you think about the pandemic and everything else. Uh, a lot of people being uh, locked in the house, not me, and not, not, not with Amazon, but a lot of people not being able or afraid to leave their house for uh, safety reasons, of course. But yeah, it, the last time I sung with the choir was um, February of 2020. Yeah. February 2020, and we did two services yesterday, the one at Creighton Road Campus and the one off of Belt Boulevard, and it was so cool. It was so great being back with the choir, and I'm not trying to be funny or corny. I genuinely mean that. I had a ball yesterday um, singing with the choir and, uh, again, beginning to serve back into the ministry because... Um, it just it makes me feel good no matter what I'm going on, no matter what's going on with my life. When I you know, when I serve in those ministries, whether it's choir or whether it's the drama department, it makes me feel good. It does. It makes me feel really, really good. So that was cool. But it is Monday, April 10th, 2000 of the two three. Like I said, little crisp. It was chilly this morning, but little little crisp, little breeze. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But it feels good here. In the Richmond VA, it does. And before uh, we get started, I definitely want to give my shout outs, Black and Gold fam, fam in general, and some happy belated birthdays that silly old me forgot to mention during the past couple of weeks of this show. So definitely happy belated birthday to my homeboy, Devon, you my bro. You know what I'm saying? His birthday was March 22nd. Happy birthday, to, happy belated birthday to my mother. You know, she was March 24th, and I can't believe I didn't you know, shout that out on the week uh, of her birthday. But yes, happy birthday. Mommy turned 66 years old. Oops, maybe I wasn't supposed to tell nobody. But um, anyway, happy belated birthday to my brother, my homeboy, Brandon George BG. You my bro. Happy birthday to to you. Love you, dog. Uh, Chantel Taylor, Chantelle, love you so much, boo-boo. Happy birthday. So if I forgot anybody, um, my bad. But those are the uh, happy belated birthdays that I did not get to over the past couple of weeks of this show, you know, so I wanted to shout that out and tell you guys, love y'all, man, love y'all, love y'all to death. But um, are you guys ready for the realm of sports? I'm ready. You ready? We ready? They all ready. Let's get to it. 
The NBA regular season is a wrap. It is over with. The last day was yesterday, and it, it every team played yesterday, and all of the games were either at 1 o'clock or 3.30. Damn, it felt like the NFL. Woo-hoo! But it is a wrap. Playoff seating has uh, been announced. Play-in games have been announced. Now, let me, again, let me reiterate, I don't like the play-in tournament. I don't. I think it's doing too much. And I've said this for the last year, maybe two, not sure. But even even if you're hell-bent on having a play-in tournament, which the NBA is because it generates more money, I think the play-in tournament should only be between the 8th seed and the ninth seed. The, the, the fact that the 7th seed and the 10th seed, no. The, the way I would do the play-in scenario, if I were the NBA, I would go, and, and this year it would apply. Because I thought the play-in scenarios last year, particularly in the Western Conference, were ridiculous. I mean, there was a 12-game difference between the seventh seed last year, who was Minnesota, and the tenth seed, who was the San Antonio Spurs. Um, and I thought that was ridiculous. It was a four-game difference between the eighth seed, who was the Los Angeles Clippers, and the ninth seed, who was the New Orleans, Pel- New Orleans Pelicans. And the Clippers end up missing the whole thing in general. But this year, the eight-nine matchup. <clears throat> would make more sense to me because again this is how i think the play in should work the the whole seven if if you're a seventh seed you're in you're in i think it should come down to the eighth seed and the ninth seed only if the separation is by a game that is it and again that would apply this year in the nba because in the eastern conference the eighth seeded atlanta hawks the ninth seeded toronto raptors both have 41 and 41 records I think that is totally cool that they that for them to play a game to decide who would be the eighth seed. In the Western Conference, the eighth seeded Minnesota Twins and the ninth seeded New Orleans Pelicans are both 42 and 40. Again, I think that would be great if they had to play each other to determine who is the eighth seed. And I'm not saying this because my Lakers are a seventh seed, but in the Eastern Conference, Miami Heat, they're a seventh seed, 44 and 38. And uh, the Chicago Bulls are the tenth seed at 40 and 42. Again, if you are, a, if, if, if if this was my perfect world, if you were a, a ninth seed and you are a game, and you were uh, more than one game back of the eighth seed, too bad. No, then that conference wouldn't have a play in. Too bad because you're rewarding you're rewarding bad regular seasons. You know, just like in the Western Conference, the Lakers are 43 and 39. Oklahoma City is the 10th seed. They're 40 and 42. Oklahoma uh, City is 40 and 42. New Orleans is 42 and 40. Too damn bad for Oklahoma City. But unfortunately, that's not the way it's going. That's not the way it's going. So let me now tell you the way things actually are. That's just my idea. Because I think the idea of a 10th, like, no. A 10th seed being able to advance up two spots when you had 82 games to do the best that you could. But now that's over with. You couldn't cut it. But now you have a chance to move up two slots to the 8th seed and make the playoffs. That's just dumb to me. That's dumb. But <clears throat> as it is, in the Eastern Conference, the Milwaukee Bucks wrapped up number one seed earlier, uh, earlier last week. They are the number one overall seed as they had the best record in the NBA at 58 and 24. Number two in the East is the Boston Celtics, 57 and 25. The Philadelphia 76ers are 54 and 28. They are the three seed. The Cleveland Cavaliers, 51 and 31. First time Cleveland Cavaliers are making the playoffs without LeBron James since the 90s. Since the 90s. The New York Knicks are the fifth seed, 47 and 35. The Brooklyn Nets, got to give them a lot of credit because when they traded KD and Kyrie, I thought the Brooklyn Nets, I thought they would be a play-in team. They were able to stay in the sixth spot, avoiding any type of play-in bullshit. They finished at 45 and 37. Good for Jock Vaughn and good that they're, Brooklyn is a team with a, a bunch of supporting cast players. But Michael Bridges has become a star. I mean, Michael Bridges since being traded from Phoenix to Brooklyn has been showing out the entire time he's been there. Seventh seed, now we're in playing mode. The Miami Heat are 44 and 38. I thought it was so cool last night. Uh, Udonis Haslam, last regular season game. He's been with the Heat his entire 20 year career undrafted. Played 20 years in the NBA, won three NBA championships. He was there for all of them, for Shaq and Wade's titles, the Heatles, Wade Bosch and, um, <clears throat> and um, Wade Bosch and LeBron. 
and he was there for all of it. And he they, they played him some major minutes, put up 24 points, had a couple threes out of alley-oop. I thought that was really cool. Miami's the seventh seed. The eighth seed Atlanta Hawks are 41 and 41. The ninth seed Toronto Raptors are 41 and 41. And the tenth seed Chicago Bulls are 41 and 40. To the Western Conference, the Denver Nuggets are the number one seed in the West, 53 and 29. The Memphis Grizzlies are 51 and 31. The Sacramento Kings in the playoffs for the first time since 2006. They held on to that three seed, 48 and 34. I was wrong about that. Now, I believe largely I was wrong about Sacramento remaining in the three seed is because Kevin Durant got hurt. I believe if KD hadn't got hurt and missed about 10 games, I believe Phoenix would have overtaken Sacramento for the third seed. But congratulations, Mike Brown should be coach of the year. They're 48 and 34. The Phoenix Suns are 45 and 37. The Los Angeles Clippers are 44 and 38. They are the five seed. They held the tiebreaker over the defending champions who are the Golden State Warriors, who are the six seed with the same 44-38 record. Now we get to seven. Now we're in playing mode. My Los Angeles Lakers are 43-39. and 39. Look, for the Lakers to finish over 500, given the way they started this season, was a goddamn miracle. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not saying this because I'm a Laker fan, but what I'm worried about now is how much gas is left in the tank because the Lakers have essentially been in playoff mode since the All-Star break. We, uh, with the All-Star break, I believe we were seeded 13th, and they moved up six spots to seven. So good job, Darvin Ham. We're 43-39 and 39 again, the number seven spot. The Minnesota Timberwolves, 42-40. and 40. <laughs> They're the eighth seed. Now, the Minnesota Timberwolves self-destructed as a team yesterday. I mean, they won their game. They did win their game against the New Orleans Pelicans, but you got Rudy Gobert punching teammates in the huddle. Then you have another player who breaks, who's so, I'm so mad, I forget the dude's name, but he's so angry with something that he punches a wall in the back, in, in the back near the locker room, breaks his hand, and is now out for the playoffs. What the hell is going on there? Uh, they're the eighth seed again, 42 and 40. The New Orleans Pelicans are 42 and 40. The Oklahoma City Thunder are 40 and 42. Okay. And we're gonna kick your fucking ass. Let's head. talk playing scenarios first. We'll start with the Eastern Conference, and the play-ins start tomorrow. The Miami Heat have to play the Atlanta Hawks in Miami. So, to me, I'm gonna be honest with you. When it comes to matchups, to me, this is a pick'em game. This is a game that. Atlanta could easily go into Miami and win. Thus, I think the thus I think the dumbness in regards to the plan, because the Miami Heat are 44 and 38, the Atlanta Hawks are 41 and 41. So you mean to tell me that if the Miami Heat lose, which counts as one game, they could possibly fall to the number eight spot, and they're three games better than the Atlanta Hawks? That don't make no fucking sense to me. It just doesn't. I think Miami as a seventh seed should be a lot, but they have to play Toronto and uh, they have to play Atlanta, excuse me, and Toronto has to play the Chicago Bulls in Toronto. Okay. No, I'm not, okay. Because I think the Bulls season should be over, personally. Okay. Um, and for the Western Conference, the Los Angeles Lakers play the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, this makes a tad bit more sense because of the records. The Lakers are 43 and 39. The Timberwolves are 42 and 40. I okay. So should the Minnesota Timberwolves win that game, they would be the number seven, and the Lakers would have to play again to see if they could be number eight. I think that the Lakers will win this game Biatch. at home against Minnesota, and then New Orleans plays Oklahoma City again. Oklahoma City should be done, in my opinion. Now. Matchups as far as playoff seeding is concerned. We know Milwaukee and Boston are waiting for the winners of these playoff games, of these play-in games, excuse me. The three-seeded Philadelphia 76ers will play the six-seeded Brooklyn Nets. Now, I believe Philadelphia is going to win this series. I think it'll be more difficult than most will, than most will uh, 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 agree. Because the Philadelphia 76ers, for whatever reason, and I think Joel Embiid should be the most valuable player. But have you watched the Philadelphia 76ers' ability to close out teams, particularly at home? They, I mean, it's, it's, it's gotten so weird and so bad. You know, you they're literally saying now, when, is, when are the 76ers going to 76er? Meaning, when are they going to fuck it up? 
despite having a record of 42 and 28, they find the most amazing ways to lose games. Or is this just a Doc Rivers thing? I don't know. But I think Philadelphia will beat Brooklyn. I think Philadelphia will beat Brooklyn in six. I would like to say five, but I could see the Sixers sixering at least one of those games in Brooklyn outright beating them another. The to me, the the two percent the two potential series that could be very, very interesting in the Eastern Conference. One is if Miami wins their playing game against Atlanta, they would have to go up against Boston. That that series to me would be absolutely fascinating because Miami ain't scared of Boston, not in the least little bit. They play Boston very well. It'll be a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals. Miami ain't intimidated by Boston, not at all. And Jimmy Butler turns into Michael Jordan in the playoffs. And the other series that I think is going to be very interesting is the 4-5 matchup between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New York Knicks. To me, that that is going to be the best series, I believe, in the Eastern Conference for the first round of the playoffs. Because the Knicks, who really, really, since they clinched their playoff spot and they were locked into the fifth seed, they really put it on cruise control for the last week, which is stunning when it comes when you talk about a, a Tom Thibodeau coach team. That's just simply stunning to me. But, you know, be that as it may, I think that's going to be a great series. Um, a lot of people are calling the Cleveland Cavaliers to win this series because overall they have the the more the the more talented players. And the plot is so thick because we all thought early in uh, early in the offseason last year that Donovan Mitchell was going to be a Nick. We all thought Donovan Mitchell was going to be a Nick along with Jalen Brunson. And, um, geez, could you imagine what the Knicks? The Knicks would probably be a, a top two or three seed. Now, they were fifth, no chopped liver. And the New York Knicks, they're a team who plays every night. Um, but, geez, can you imagine Donovan Mitchell with Brunson and Randall? A G whiz. And now, Brunson, to me, was the biggest all-star snub this year. Uh, I, I don't know how he didn't make the all-star team. Um, but be that as it may, Donovan Mitchell has been awesome as a Cleveland Cavalier. His first year in Cleveland has been absolutely amazing, incredible. I think if Cleveland was maybe in around the two spot, you you would seriously have Donovan Mitchell for MVP. You would have legitimate uh, conversation about that. But I think that series against New York Knicks is going to be great. I think that's going to be a seven-game series. Logic says Cleveland, I'm rooting for the Knicks. I am rooting for the New York Knicks. Nothing against Donovan Mitchell because I love Donovan Mitchell's game. I remember watching him as a rookie. I said, that dude reminds me of Dwayne Wade. And I haven't I haven't moved off of that. I think that's going to be the best series. I think that's going to be a seven-gamer. I'm rooting for the Knicks. Logic would say Cleveland because it ain't just Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. Cleveland is, a, and I said this, I said this before the basketball season started when I was on the line with Tony. I said, Cleveland is going to be a good young team. Last year, Cleveland missed it because of the play-in bullshit. They were, what, I want to say they were, um, no, they started as an eighth seed. Uh, but yeah, Cleveland missed it because of the play-in. They kind of just fizzled out, you know, as the season waned last year. When they got Donovan Mitchell, I said, you ain't got to worry about that. I said, Cleveland will legitimately be in the playoffs. And, you know, Tony said, if they mesh, well, they meshed. They meshed very well. They have a home They have home court advantage for the first round of the playoffs. In the Western Conference, we know Denver and Memphis will be waiting for the, to see what happens with the play in action. Now, the Western Conference is, to me, clearly the two most, the two most uh, entertaining series in the West. It's clearly... If the Lakers, when the Lakers beat the Timberwolves, they will be the seventh seed and they will have to play the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, I wonder how many courtside games Shannon Sharp going to be in for that one because we remember they had to scuffle. Shannon Sharp got into, uh, into it with Dylan Brooks. That would be great if the Lakers and the Grizzlies play each other. And the second most intriguing series to me is going to be uh, Phoenix and the Clippers. But Sacramento as a three seed gets the Golden State Warriors. Every nobody in the NBA world outside of Sacramento believes that Sacramento was going to win their first round series, no matter who they played. 
unless somehow, some way, they grab, they they were able to draw the Timberwolves or the Pelicans. If you were anybody outside of that, nobody is going to pick Sacramento to win a, a playoff series. They are a great offensive team. They don't play no defense. They are an absolutely awesome offensive team, and it's great to see them back in the playoffs. Now, on the contrary, Golden State has been god-awful on the road this year, even though they put up 157 last night at Portland. I mean, they had put up like 50-some points, over 50 points in the first quarter. They were just raining threes all over. They picked the last road game of the season to play their best road game of the regular season. Okay, maybe you carry that into the playoffs. I'm picking the Warriors to win that series. I'm picking the Warriors to come out the West until somebody actually beats them. Now, I'll say this again. With Steph, Clay, and Draymond, when they're healthy on the court, nobody in the Western Conference has eliminated the Golden State Warriors in almost 10 years. It's been 2014, the last time it happened. I'm picking Golden State to beat Sacramento, even though Sacramento has the home court advantage. Grits and Gravy Series, Suns versus Clippers. Okay. Now, to me, a lot of people are calling Phoenix to come out of the West, and I can see why. You know, they haven't lost when Kevin Durant has been on the floor. Kevin Durant has a banana stat where, like, he's only lost twice. When he's been on the floor, he's only lost two times since November. Like, that's crazy. Like, when Kevin Durant is on your team, be it Brooklyn or Phoenix, you don't lose. Which is why I was like, when it came to Brooklyn, I'm like, I ain't trading him. We don't lose when he plays. But it is what it is. So that's why uh, Phoenix is a lot of people's pick to come out of the Western Conference. I don't know who to pick in this series because the Clippers. Now, if Paul George isn't playing, if Paul George is not able to play in this series, the Clippers are not going to win. Okay, they need Paul George because Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they, they have to be there to guard Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Um... I was kind of hoping, this was for my own greed, I was kind of hoping that the Clippers fell to the sixth spot and had to play the Kings, moving the Warriors up to to the fifth seed so you could have KD versus the Warriors, and then you would have a potential Lakers-Clippers second-round series. But it didn't work out that way. But, gosh, I mean, the Clippers, to me, are the deepest team in the NBA. Russell Westbrook has played great since he's been a Los Angeles Clipper. Remember, they tried to put it when he first got there and they had the the losing streak. They tried to blame it all on Westbrook. But Ty Lue has figured it out thus far with Westbrook. And they've been playing very good basketball. And Westbrook's game has elevated since Paul George has been out. But they need Paul George for this series. If the if the Clippers were playing the, the Kings, you could get away with not having Paul George for that series. You need Paul George against the uh, uh, Phoenix Suns. That is a tough, 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 tough series. That, to me, has seven games all over. I hear some teams saying that uh, the, the Phoenix is going to dust the Clippers in five. If Paul George doesn't play, that may be true. That may be true, but the match, I mean, can't you love the matchups? You got Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, Paul George, um, uh, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook. You know, this, like, the, the matchups are great in that series, but Paul George, I hope, he, I hope he's able to play. Um, now, I believe the Lakers will win their play in game against Minnesota, and I believe the Los Angeles Lakers will beat the Memphis Grizzlies should, should we or when we meet them in the playoffs. I do. The Lakers have been, they've had the best record in the NBA since the All-Star break. And since all of those moves were made um, by Rob Palenka at the trade deadline, they found a lineup, a starting lineup that they can stick with. It's working. You have D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves at the guards. You have Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron, and AD in the front line. That lineup works. Hachimura coming off the bench has been great. Malik Beasley coming off the bench has been great. Schroeder has been great. This lineup works. I think the Lakers will beat Memphis, but how much will be left in the tank? Because, again, they've been in playoff mode since February. How much will be left in the tank should they run into Golden State? Because that's what I believe is going to happen. I believe whoever Denver plays, be it uh, Minnesota or New Orleans or even um, Oklahoma City, I believe Denver will win that series. Now, if the Pelicans get in, if the Pelicans get in at the eighth spot, I believe they could give Denver some problems. I do. 
I, not depending on Zion Williamson. And again, um, like I said last season or during the uh, last uh, last off season, I would not have given Zion Williamson that contract. I understand why because he's a star, and you and you just lost Anthony Davis, who at that point was the your best player, who had been your best player for a while. Zion Williamson's health is not dependable. He only played what thirty games this season, thirty some games this season. And he, this guy does not play enough to warrant that type of contract. When is that going to be addressed? And I said this before he was drafted. I said with his body type and the way he plays, he ain't going to last. And le- or, or by the time he's 28 years old, he's going to be Zach Randolph. Back to the basket. He's, he's, his game is not going to be above the rim. So I hope he's working on his jump shots because he's not worth that contract. He's great when he's on the floor, but he's not on the floor enough. Which leads me to the next topic the NBA has put in now that you have to play at least 65 games in order to be eligible for any NBA awards fair enough I mean if it was me I would say 70 games but you know I grew up in the 90s early 2000s when players enjoyed playing basketball when there was no there was no such thing as a load management if you had a back-to-back you just played a back-to-back it was no big deal you know it it wasn't and I don't care if you had been in the league five years or if you've been in the league 15 years if you had a back-to-back you played the motherfucker you know NBA players and I'm not trying to sound like grumpy old man because I'm not but you I mean it's just amazing how much these NBA star players don't want to play basketball but want to get paid triple the amount that the greats before them were getting paid now look like i said i grew up in the 90s they were giving out 100 million dollar contracts then Shaq, kevin garnett uh kobe they were giving 100 million dollar contracts out and those players were earning those 100 million dollar contracts okay they were playing they cared about you know giving the fan a great experience when you came to an nba game i've never been to an nba game now, I don't want to go to an NBA game because if I go to an NBA game and I don't see my favorite player playing because of whatever reason, some bullshit rest, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I, so that means I wouldn't go to a Laker game. I would go to a Milwaukee Bucks game because I know Giannis is going to play. So 65 games. So what is that? what's that going to do for the MVP? Um, so pretty much what you're saying is the MVP every year, at least for the next five years, is going to be between Giannis and Jokic. Embiid if you keep your fingers crossed that's that's pretty much what you're saying because everybody else KD don't play KD don't play 65 game season no more maybe you could luck up with LeBron Anthony Davis right um (laughs) or you would have to look at a player like a Demonis Sabonis or a um um Donovan Mitchell you know they they play I'm not as crazy as may sound Julius Randle Jalen Brunson, these guys, they play. They have played the majority of the season. Um, I guess you could look at Tatum. I mean, but that's that's what I see when I when I hear that you have to play at least 65 games. First thing I think about is okay, well, Jokic and Giannis will be the front runners every year for the foreseeable future. And like I said, 65 games, okay, fine. I would do 70. And people keep saying, well, you need to shorten the season. You need to bring the season down to 58 games. That's not going to happen. The NBA has been 82 games for a very, very long time. They are, and plus the business side of it, these they have TV contracts with the networks for 82 games. They're not going to lose that money because players are more brittle now than ever. Or if you say, well, it's the style of the game now because everybody's shooting threes. Throw the ball in the paint for all of that. Go back to uh, actually having a... a a couple of frontline players with some post-up moves, so everybody's not running from one corner to one corner to the next corner in 2.5 seconds. So I mean, it ain't. It's not the fans' fault. It's not the league's fault that these supposed to be bigger, stronger, faster players can't stay healthy. You know whose fault it is? Mike D'Antoni. <laughs> it's his fault for introducing seven seconds or less 20 years ago with the motherfucking Phoenix Suns. It's his fault because everybody it's a copycat world we live in. And but the only, but the only thing nobody copycatted from Dan Tony was winning the title. Because although his style of play was exciting, scored a lot of points, got a lot of regular season victories, what did it get you in the playoffs? 
not even an NBA Finals appearance, sir. And I'm not trying to take shots at you. I'm just spitting facts. I'm spitting factual information about Mike D'Antoni. And um, people are wondering what happened to the Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks. Oh, before they got Kyrie Irving, the Dallas Mavericks were ranked were fourth in the West. Boy, Marquise, the next time I get your ass on the phone. Last time we was on the phone talking basketball, he said the Dallas Mavericks were going back to the Western Conference Finals. Boy, and I saw you the other day when you was at work. Boy, you reminded me of that. And boy, you were wrong. The Dallas Mavericks didn't even make the playoffs. When they got Kyrie Irving, they were the fourth seed in the West. They dropped all the way down to 11. And naturally, what are we going to do? Everybody's going to say it's Kyrie Irving's fault. You're absolutely wrong. Kyrie Irving was spectacular as a Dallas Maverick. He he did what he was supposed to do. I'm going to tell you what your problems were. First, you traded all your best defensive players to get Kyrie Irving. Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, you traded your best defensive players to get Kyrie Irving. And Kyrie Irving is not known for his defense. Doesn't play much defense. So you're going to get a lot of points, but you ain't going to get no damn defense. Secondly, and most important, Luka Doncic. This is your fault, bro. You are most to blame. You know why? Because Luka spends more time complaining at referees when calls don't go his way than he does playing on both sides of the floor. I'm going to say this about Luka Doncic. It's the same thing I said about James Harden. If Luka is your number one option on your basketball team, you will not win a title. With the style of play, that the ball-dominant style that he plays with, you ain't winning a chip. And the NBA has tried to crown this man for the last three, four years. The last three, four years coming into the season, Luka's the favorite to win MVP. Why? For what? He, good, he puts up numbers. I mean, like I said, just like with James Harden. When James Harden was tearing shit up in Houston, I would say if he's your number one option, you're not winning a title. Not going to happen. You blame Kyrie Irving all you want to, and I hope Kyrie get his money and stay in Dallas, no state taxes. I think when it comes to those dollar dollars, I think Kyrie is going to stay in Dallas. I, initially, I thought that he was going to end up coming to the Lakers. We got, no, Lakers need to just go ahead and keep D'Angelo Russell. We're good. We're good. No knock on Kyrie. No knock on Kyrie at all. Because I want to see Kyrie get the most money he can get. And that will come from Dallas. That will come from Dallas. And then the no Texas, no state income taxes. And Kyrie balled. Kyrie balled out this season. He was an all-star. He balled out this season. He knew that he had to, he, he did not, nobody was going to listen to any excuses of him missing games outside of that bullshit that they tried to put on him early in the season about the anti-Semitism. Give me a break. Give me a fucking break. The, the, the media does not like Kyrie Irving, so they will do whatever they can to trash him. Kyrie Irving played his ass off this season. He deserves a fat contract. Now, get this fat contract. Honor your contract, dude. Honor your contract because the Brooklyn Nets, Dallas, any other team has a damn good reason of why they would be hesitant to sign you because of your behavior over the last three, four years. Get your fat contract, honor it. You were not the problem in Dallas. I will not, I will not one of them people who think it's because of Kyrie. No, no, not, not this. You want to say Boston? Okay. You want to say Brooklyn? Okay. Not this tenure in Dallas, not thus far. Uh-uh. Kyrie balled, he balled out. Yo, yo, yo running mate, Luca, you're not winning a title with that dude. Not, not with him as your number one off. We're not with, with him as your number one option. You're not. Not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. So, Dallas Mavericks get you some defensive players. I think Dallas will be back in the playoff hunt next year. But um, Mark Cuban, Luca's not Dirk, man. Luca's not Dirk Nowitzki. While he may have a better skill set than Dirk, he's not a leader like Dirk. And you know he's he Dirk. You saw Dirk win an MVP. You saw him carry two teams to the finals, winning a championship. That ain't Luca. Luca doesn't have that that in his DNA like Dirk did. I'm just being honest. If he's your number one option, you ain't winning no title. You win a lot of regular season games. You'll get to the playoffs, but you're not winning a chip. You're not. Now on to the world of football. 
Odell Beckham uh, has reportedly signed a one-year contract with the Baltimore Ravens for $15 million. <laughs> That's right, $15 million for one year for a receiver that ain't played since February of 2022. God damn! And I'm not mad at him. But the question is, does the Ravens bringing in Odell Beckham, does that get Lamar Jackson back there? Yeah, ho. Will he rescind his trade request? Will he sign the non-exclusive franchise tender? Because the Ravens can say, well, we got you now, wide receiver. This ain't like when Buffalo got Stephon Diggs. Not like when Philly got A.J. Brown. Same like when the uh, Cardinals got DeAndre Hopkins. Those three receivers I just named were in their 20s, in their prime, and weren't coming off two ACL injuries. You niggas are crazy! I'm out. I think Odell is going to show out, hopefully, if he can stay healthy. I think this is a good pickup for the Baltimore Ravens. Don't get me wrong. Um... But the way that these court, the way that these people, these general managers and coordinators are talking about Lamar Jackson, for Christ's sake, are you serious? Well, Lamar Jackson is not this, he's not that. You know, see, Lamar Jackson is probably that same, those same people who are talking all that bullshit about Lamar Jackson are the teams that Lamar Jackson used to smoke. The Ravens are not a good team without Lamar Jackson, period, point blank, end of subject. The Baltimore Ravens are not a good team when Lamar Jackson is not playing. I, and I'm going to come back on the phone. I'm going I'm to get on the phone with my guys. They're not, but the Ravens aren't good. When Lamar Jackson doesn't play, they're not good. So the And it's funny because he's not doing what they want him to do. So they're going to... We already know there's a collusion going on. They're trying to kill his market value. I told you this a couple of weeks ago. He doesn't have an agent. Agents don't want him to get a big contract. Um, uh, owners don't want him to get that Deshaun Watson type money because then every quarterback is going to expect it. I understand. I know. I get all of that. But to straight up devalue him as a quarterback, again, the Baltimore Ravens are not good without him. I hope he does come back to Baltimore because I would like to see him play with Odell Beckham. I would like to see what him and Odell could do if that could take Lamar Jackson's career to another level where he can be playing in February or late January, but we shall see. Okay, and as I said, I'm going to bring up this Odell Beckham situation with my guys, and they are here, the fun bunch, brother Sean, Cudden David, what it do? What's good, what's good with you? I got gas. Okay, and David said he has gas. <laughs> <laughs> and and this was like a couple of seconds after he said he was about to go make a sandwich, so I don't know how much that was going to help. <laughs> First of all, how was y'all fellas Easter? Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Man, I was good, man. I was, you know, we went with the family up to uh, Caroline County. Out there, had us a little dinner. The babies did a little Easter egg hunt in the yard like usual. <laughs> oh, you went to your mom's crib? Yeah. Okay, yeah, dope. Dope, dope, dope. What about you, D? Went to work, had a stomach bomb. Had a shit. (laughs) I can dig it. Went to work, had a stomach. Sometimes you got to go to work. Sometimes you got to have a stomach virus. All right. And he's going to make the sandwich. All right. Going to make the sandwich. All right, well, let let me get to uh, brass taxes. Um... Odell Beckham, his son. Now, what did you say about Odell Beckham, David? I was like, is he still good? He still got that head that looks like a uh, a walk up and a uh, on going. You said, is he still what? I don't know if he still has the uh, blonde hair color or not. Somebody's doing a lot in their background right now. That's me, bro. I got stuff to do. Bro. Oh, that's right. You got you got chores. I understand. <laughs> I am calling during chore time. Okay. But Odell Beckham signed a one-year contract to be with the Baltimore Ravens. One year, 15 mil, could earn up to as much as 18 million. Uh, I'll start with you, Sean. What is your thoughts on that contract? Uh, man, of course, if Odell is beautiful, I mean, he get to come back and still get paid like he... He never left. He, yeah, like he never left. Like he's been contributing for the past couple of years. Uh, he gets to play on the team who doesn't really have a true number one. Bateman, almost like him, kind of been 
hurt by injuries and stuff, snake by injuries. So, I mean, he could still compete like he's still a number one wide receiver. As far as the Ravens, uh, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, but I mean, I mean, you 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 get you get a good name, uh, character in there. So I could see that you try to entice uh, Lamar Jackson to come back. But I mean, that ain't that ain't his problem. Bringing in a receiver for him, his problem is the check that you try to pay him. So I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what that really entails. That you you're gonna come over there and then Odell Beckham is like, are you talking to Lamar? Because otherwise, you got to be. Receiving uh, passes from Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, mm-hmm. David, what do you, what do you think of Odell to the Ravens? I don't think about Odell to the Beckham. You know, if you know what I think about Odell to the Ravens, as about as much as I think about me having my stomach virus this last week, it gives me gas. <laughs> <laughs> Odell Beckham gives me gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the response so, I, mean, I expected from right now. So, so, so they're giving what's he guaranteed? Fifteen million. Fifteen million, yeah. Fifteen, yeah. Fifteen million, and they could they couldn't pay Lamar, and Lamar's gone now. Well, he's not technically gone, but so okay. So I, I, David, I'll start with you with the next question. Do you think that will entice Lamar Jackson to come back at least for one more year with the Ravens? Who the hell is Who the hell is Odell Beckham? I mean, the name, the name, the name. The name? Yeah. Mm, nah. Nah. Because I mean, sooner or later, that one year, I give him about seven games before he re injured that knee again. That's the, that's the, that's the question mark. Yeah. He's yeah. he going he gonna to re injure that knee. You're saying a, a receiver in his latter years coming off of two ACL injuries for that much money. That's crazy to me. And Sean, this I mean, is right. this is what I, this is what like I said you about this. Pay more than you pay for the, the actual receiver, even though when he was at LA before he got injured again, he was producing. He was showing out. You said what? I said he was showing out with LA before yeah. he got hurt. Yeah, he was doing the same. So I mean, but you coming off another one? I mean, and you haven't been, and you ain't even played the whole last year. Right. I, uh, this is this this, uh, this is what I said about this, Sean. Um, bro, before I called you guys, okay. And I gave some comparing contrast, okay. And I'm not hating on Odell. I'm not knocking Odell's hustle. If they want to pay you that for one year, by all means, get your money, pimping. But Absolutely. this is not like when um, the Buffalo Bills got Stephon Diggs for Josh Allen. This is not like when the Philadelphia Eagles got AJ Brown for Jalen Hurts. It's not like when the Cardinals got DeAndre Hopkins for Kyler Murray. Those were three receivers in their prime, in their 20s, who were not coming off of major knee injuries and not playing the year before. So, what now what this can do if Odell Beckham stays healthy and he still, you know, is at least a 1A-ish receiver, it could maybe yeah. free up Rashad Bateman more and free up Andrews more, but it all but Odell's brittle now. This is this is what it is. He's brittle now. And but if you're Lamar Jackson, I mean, if you're Lamar, so I right, well, Sean, what do you think? If you, your, I want your opinion. Do you think that entices Lamar Jackson to come back for another year? I mean, it depends on the relationship factor. Because if I'm Lamar Jackson, I'm looking at a wide receiver that's coming off of two ACL injuries. That I mean, that hasn't played last year. Like I said, in my eyes, it's like I don't know where he's gonna be or he's even gonna make it through a whole season. So. I'm worried about my bread. Like, that's the whole thing about Lamar. He's worried about his bread. So, I don't really care about who you bring in, this, in here to play with me. You can bring, uh, you can throw uh, Jesus out there and say, hey, Jesus, you want to run some of these routes? But you going to pay me my money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, at, the end of the day, I'm, I, at the end of the day, I'm worried about me, and that's what it's down to. So, whoever you put out there, I'm not I'm not really worried about. But it depends on the relationship that you have with that player. Like, if we boys off the field, and you know that, and me and my boys, I'm talking like, yo, I come play there for you. Yeah. Right. And the relationship Absolutely. between the Ravens and yeah. Lamar Jackson ain't great. Yeah, and your relationship is bad, too. So, I mean, if you have a relationship with that player, then maybe that'll entice him to come back. But other than that, man, I'm really looking to get my money. Uh, and uh, bringing a, uh, a receiver that hasn't played last year at the latter part of his uh, career coming off of two ACL injuries ain't really entice me to come back at all. I'm going to be honest. I mean, the name is great. And if he's still healthy, <laughs> great. 
But I'm gonna be honest. If, if if I was Lamar Jackson, I would be more excited if they got Brandon Cooks. If they had got somebody like that, somebody who well, he's been traded a lot, but, but the dude is healthy. <coughs> the dude stays healthy. But what gets me is all of these talking heads trying to down talk Lamar Jackson's style of play now because he won't play ball the way they want him to play ball as far as the contract is negotiated. The Ravens are not good when Lamar Jackson is not playing. Nope. Proven. They're, they're, they're decent enough to win some games, but they ain't good enough to go to, to really do, to go nowhere farther than that. Yeah. In a real big, tough game. Not with Huntley. Exactly. Huntley is that backup quarterback who plays just good enough to lose. Kyle Rod Taylor. <laughs> That's a good comparison. Tyrod Taylor. There you go. He, he's just, he's right above average, but just terrible enough to be trash. <laughs> yeah. He can get you excited and be like, man, he can win us some games. He might get he, he play, make some good plays, but then when it's really necessary, he really can't do it. <laughs> no, they're not safe. Right, until the game is on the line. Yeah, that's it. Huntley will get you excited, and it'll be 20 to 19, and you think they're about to win, and then he'll fumble. Yeah, that's like shit. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. I got it. Did y'all want to I'm weak. That's my boy. That's my boy. Mark Sanchez. That's my boy. Well, I know, Sean, you don't do much basketball, but it is playoff time. No, I've been, watch, I've been watching a little bit of this show, checking out the play-in, because that's been exciting. Because to be honest, I actually like D'Angelo Russell, and I and, uh, I was excited when they got him back in there. So I have been paying attention a little bit to the LeBron. I mean, to to, to the Lakers, watching some highlights, making uh, finding out about the play-in. They play the Timberwolves, right? Yes, or, I'll Bob, be right? damned. Yes, they play the Timberwolves. Yeah, yeah bro, I be I pay attention to that now. So it's playoffs now. And like I said, I, like they got a good product in there, uh, a good product. Man. You know what I'm saying with them young boys playing too. So I, I watch. Yeah, they 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 uh Lakers finally found a lineup that works. Yeah. Uh, D'Lo and uh, D'Lo and Austin Reeves are the guard, Vanderbilt, LeBron, and 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 AD. Yeah, uh, you know you always keep your fingers crossed when AD whenever AD hits the floor. He ain't never lie. But um, I, I think. I'm just for that to happen. He, he broke it. He broke it. He broke it. That's why you really can't get too excited. I mean, it, it was funny because I. It's funny because when he uh when he tweaked it like right when he came back and everybody was like, oh brother, but he, I mean he. Ended, oh, the ankle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he ended up coming back in the game because I know he was like, man, are you joking, bro? Like I just got that. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Being that tall and long people and playing a game where you just jump up and down all the time, bro. That ain't, ain't it, bro. I think certain aspects of the play-in. Now, di- now, disagree with me if you want. That's fine. I believe that some aspects of the play-in are stupid. And I've been saying this for the last year. Like, okay. Now, th- this year, it, it, th- this year the 8-9 thing is warranted because literally the 8th seed in the East and the West have the same record. The way since they're hell bent on doing a play on a playing tournament, and it's all about money. I think they should eliminate the whole tenth seed and the seventh seed. Like it should come down to me. It should come down between the eighth seed and the ninth seed, because think about this: last season, the seventh seed in the West was Minnesota. They were twelve games better than the tenth seed, which was San Antonio. But there was an actual scenario where Minnesota could have missed the playoffs and San Antonio could have made the playoffs. That don't make no fucking sense to me. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I think that if, if, if instead of doing the top six seeds, I think they should do the top seven and have it come down between the eighth seed and the ninth seed only if they're separated by one game. Because if, if, if I'm an eighth seed, like the Clippers last year were an eighth seed. They were four games better than the Pelicans but they lost one game to the Pelicans and they missed the whole damn playoffs. That makes no sense to me. But, um, and I'm not saying this because the Lakers are a seventh seed. The Lakers play Minnesota. But you did you see the dumb shit that the Timberwolves did yesterday? He talking about Gobert. Rita yeah, Gobert Rudy Gobert, Gobert punching his teammate? Yeah, bro. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Hey, that, man. 
I, I, don't, I don't know, bro. Like, that's just, it's just happening a lot as of late in a lot of teams, man. People try to just play that, bro. <laughs> he says, he says, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, all right, I got too many. I mean, he hit him in the chest, like a little chest joint. He ain't really feel him in the face. He said, I think he said that he told him to go block a shot or something like that, and he yeah, punched he him. Yeah, he told him to go block a shot. He told him to go get a rebound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just, that was just, that was just you know, a motherfucker just tired of each other shit. You know, you just got somebody you work with to knock him the fuck out. He just, they just went for it. But then they had another player. I think his name is Jaden McDaniel. After the punched game. The mm-hmm. And broke his And his, punched the wall and broke his hand right. after a game. You just won. Yeah. <laughs> and now he out for the rest of the season because he punched the wall and broke his hand. That's some dumb shit right there. If you're like that, like if I was a, if I was a like a um, a owner, or some shit, yeah, I'm like, bro, you do some shit like that, you don't get paid, bro. Exactly, I ain't paying your ass. So you want to get mad over? Mind you, they just won the game. I, I can see if like like they lost it, the they won the game. If you don't get, if you get injured off the playing field, uh, and you up court doing some shit like that, you don't get the money. You don't get the money from me, bro. You owe me now. Yeah, fire, fire, bro. Hey David, are you punching a wall and breaking your hand when you know you have a playing game two days later? Because because you you hurt your biggest asset right there. They play the Lakers, well, though, though, right? Asset. Yeah, they play the Lakers. Oh uh, yeah, they, 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 you need the you need your players, bro. And when Gobert is already, they already said Gobert is suspended for that game. Yeah. I, should be. I mean, they, they they play hard without their, without them, and play, it seems like they don't like go go there anyway. And I uh, think that's what happened with him in Utah. Like Donovan Mitchell was sick of his ass. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers ain't trying for you. They're like it, it could be your person. Like it's okay when you do their personality. You just can't fuck with, bro. Maybe it's maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the whole Frenchman vibe. I don't know. <laughs> don't you group them? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but yeah, uh, yeah, um, it's funny how, uh, Draymond trolled him with this little tweet. Oh, yeah. You know, Draymond got to get his feet for that shit. Hey, Draymond, Draymond should have trolled him and said, hey, that punch won't as good as mine. You hit like a bitch. Yeah, he definitely ate it. Like, he, did, he hit him with a little chip. It was almost like a punch push, you know? Yeah. Like a... You know, like I want to punch you, man. I want, I want to, I really want to punch you, but I can't really get too aggressive on the, on in front of all these cameras, and I don't want to get in trouble. And yeah, well, Dray- I don't really want you to knock me out or nothing. But I'm so mad. I'm just so frustrated. Draymond, Draymond threw a knockout yeah. punch. Draymond threw one of the just like, yeah. I'm- yeah, you mean look like an asshole because that's what he did. He yeah. just looked like a dumbass yeah. in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can tell, bro, but that. That's, that's a stupid shit. But I'm again. I'm more. I'm more mad at the dude punching the wall and breaking his hand. Absolutely. Than I am Rudy Gobert because that's just dumb. Messing your money up. You messing your money up, bro. Because he wanted to go oh, Mike Tyson on the wall. What the wall do to you, my nigga? <laughs> you know, 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 you because that's the dude right there that's gonna drink and drive. He's gonna beat up a hooker. <laughs> he don't care. He don't care. He don't care about his own health. He doesn't care about the team. Nah, you fine. That's the part that gets me is that he they won the game. Like they had just won the game. And you punching walls like you just lost by a last second three point shot. Well Maybe he thought they lost. I don't know. <laughs> They, they was at home too. Maybe he thought, man, these fans are cheering because we lost. Son of a bitch, crack. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, but I was so, an announcer at that game. Like, he broke his hand by punching the wall. Like, 
dumbass. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, who do you think? So, Sean, I'm gonna ask you first. Who do you think is gonna win the whole thing? The, as far as what the West thing? No, the the whole cha- the championship in general. See, now you got to come back with me uh, with that, and I need to do more eyes on these teams because I just been paying attention to the Lakers, and then you know people doing stupid shit like Rudy Gobert. And, <laughs> and, but I, I need to, you know me, I'm on site. I want to see how they play and everything like that. Okay. Uh, and then I'll let you know exactly who who I will come out both sides. David, same you know, question. Uh, I'm a Lakers fan, you know. I, I know. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see them go. You know what I, mean? I, I think. I think. Together. That's why I'm starting to watch basketball. I think the Lakers are going to beat Minnesota. I think they're going to be locked into the yeah. seventh seed. And I think the Lakers hey, are going to beat uh, Memphis in the first round. Yeah. Well, we'll see. That's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for an excitement. Because, and I heard them talking about this never been, you know, it's very hard for, you know, like a play-in team to win the whole championship. It's never been. Oh, my God. Like oh, my God. Do like the first, oh, my like God. The, the play-in has been around. This is like the third year. Oh, my God. They're trying to put standards on that already? Oh, my you know God. It. Okay. It's a surprise story. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You know. Um, uh, okay. LeBron, yeah. You know I hate LeBron, bro. I'm all about Kobe. You know me too. I just you know want that. Kobe product to look good. That's all it is. Well, David, same question. Who do you think is gonna win the title? This should be good. No, you can't. I just made my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I think me honestly, I think um I think Milwaukee's gonna win. Sean Pay what look pay attention. Three three teams, no four teams I want you to look at. <clears throat> Milwaukee, um, Boston, uh the Phoenix Suns, and the LA Clippers. Pay attention to those teams. Oh yeah, I didn't think the Clippers were doing too well the way they could. No, the Clippers—they're the fifth seed. The Clippers have to play Phoenix in the first round. That's gonna be a war. Oh, but, but you see, I'm, uh, when it comes to the playoffs, like I, I'll pay attention. I watch those games. Like, well, they, let me let me give you the matchups for for um, Phoenix versus the Clippers. Okay, now it all to me the Clippers. I think the Clippers can win if Paul George is healthy. If Paul George don't play, then they then they not gonna win because you have. On one side, you got Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Chris Paul. On the other side, you got Kawhi Leonard, maybe Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. I love those matchups. And I think the only shot the Clippers have is Paul George has to play. Paul George has to play. But I think that has seven game series written all over it. So and now I say the Bucks, I've been saying the Bucks is gonna win, or at least they're gonna come out the East all year, because to me, Giannis is the best basketball player in the world. Um, but yeah, pay attention to those teams. But David uh, and, and Sean, chime in on this. I have to, I have to ask David this question. David called me last week when I was at the barber shop, happy as hell, laughing at the same time. This is totally off the topic of sports because Donald Trump got arrested. I know. I want. I just want David's opinion on it. How did that make you feel, sir? Oh, man, I'm sick. He's finally getting his come up. Fuck that. You know what this is? This is equivalent to uh, somebody about to drop a CD on a mixtape. You know, they got to get into the, the <laughs> They got to get into the trouble to, to make the album hot? <laughs> yeah. They got to get their news up to make the album hot and shit like that. They, oh, they shit. To make the album hot. They, it, it, the name of girl. I don't see which one. Are you talking about the white collar? <laughs> right before, little right before, little Boosie got an album the coming white. out. He got to do uh, a sixty day bid for album sales. Well, I'm not buying no Donald Trump mixtape. I think it'll be trash. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure a Donald Trump mixtape is gonna be garbage. I, I don't even know which one she's talking about. What do you What yeah. do you think What do you think some of the songs would be on a Donald yeah. Trump mixtape? The fourth matter, of course. <laughs> that would be the lead single. <laughs> and of course, I know you'll be on there. <laughs> this dumbass. Um, fucking, um, grab her by the pussy, of course. <laughs> <laughs>
and then the, and then have like three interludes all with all with all of the lawyers talking about the shit he paid for. <laughs> it wasn't his it's money. So long. <laughs> and it'd be a bonus track called January Six. Right. Uh, that's right. So yeah, man, I'm not I'm not buying no Trump shit. But that shit right there, that's federal. That nigga doing time. I'm happy. Man, you really think Donald Trump is actually going to get be locked up? Nope. Yep. You actually believe that, D? I'm going with it. He's a damn thing. I'm going to go with it. Okay. That was the happiest bit of news I got in a while. Yeah, this nigga called me. I'm in the barbershop chair. He's like, dude, he's like, Trump's getting arrested. <laughs> he said, what a day for niggas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Hey, you a funny ass dude, man. <laughs> Yo, I just tried to dance and outfit for this girl and she said, Dad, you really want me to look like this? Oh, she got you pegged, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'll never do a thing like that again. I'll never do it. What did you what were you gonna put on her? No, nah, she had a Wednesday costume, and so uh, it's so big that her just droops down at the bottom. Oh. Uh, so I lift it up, and usually they she put like just put like a little like a hair tie around it, so she could just walk around in it. For me, I I just took a pair of her tights and like the pink like just tied them around there. <laughs> Damn, bro. Damn, bro. That's hilarious. I really want to do it like that. It was just funny. Did you hear David's tracks for Donald Trump mixtape? What's that? Well, when you said that this is like when somebody drop a new mixtape in the album, they got to get in trouble to make the album hot. Uh-huh. So David said he ain't buying no Donald Trump mix mixtape. Yeah. So I asked him, what would the hit singles be on the Donald Trump mixtape? What'd you tell him? What'd you say, David? I said, of course, of course, the first track is with, with Kanye. It's, it's MAGA. And of course, Kanye featured on that track. <laughs> <laughs> MAGA, MAGA. The next, yeah, the next, the next joint, uh, what's, what's that? Grab her by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> And so I have like three or four interludes to talk about him and his lawyers talking about shit he paid for, but didn't use his money. <laughs> featuring like, featuring uh, his lawyers, the ones that locked up now. And then the hidden track would be January 6th. You, Victor, Victor, Victor. Hey, y'all keep messing with Donald. Donald coming for y'all. He's about to show y'all. Well, David, you you actually think, D, that he's going to see it the inside of a jail cell. I find that hard to believe. Because right after the Nick... The political political standpoint of it, he He can't run again. Well, yeah, I mean, I I believe that. He can't run. This right here, this credibility credibility he has that he can run. Even if he doesn't do a date, he can't run in the next election. Well, I wasn't going to vote for the motherfucker if he ran or not. I today. Yep. Even if he doesn't do a single day, this discredits him, disqualifies him damn near from running in the next election because he has that indictment pending. Even if they don't go through it right now, the indictment is there. So he's got years, or however long they play this shit out, there's years on this indictment before they can even, they can stretch it out for the next five to six years. He can't run. Well, I wasn't gonna vote for him whether he ran again or not. But I don't know if I would vote for Biden again if he ran or not. Uh, Boy, Angel Angel Reese it, it got some beef with the first lady. Uh, who? The basketball player from LSU. Yeah, I know Angel Reese. Got some beef with Jill Biden, the first lady. She beef with her. Leave them old white ladies alone. You hear what the um the um first lady said? Um. She since walked the statement back. She tried to say that, um, because you know when the team won the championship, you go to the White House, right? Yeah, I thought she said they accepted. I thought they accepted to go. To- they did accept it, but I'm saying before they accepted, I was telling David about how the first lady tried to get Iowa, said that Iowa should come to the White House too. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, like where they do that at? Yeah. You know what that was all I'm about? Not she said. 
You know what that shit was all about. Man, uh, yeah, I thought she had seen something now. Well, at first, Angel Reese was like, nah. She said, no, nah, I don't want to go to the White House. I want to go see the Obamas. I thought that was special. Yeah, now that's funny. That was special. Nobody want to go to the White House no more. <laughs> Nobody want to see that shit no more. That shit was special back in the day when we used to be. It used to be. It was like, oh, go to the White House. Yeah, now it's just like, man, it's a big-ass building. It'd be right. <laughs> <laughs> They got rats and cracks in the building just like the rest of it. It's cool. <laughs> rats and cracks. Rats and cracks. We've been there before, ain't it? What, to the White House? Yeah. Nah, we, we sung in front of the White House. Same thing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And, and the Capitol okay. building. Yeah, when we was in chorus. Boy, well, imagine if we had a sung in front of the Capitol building when, when June si- Ooh. Oh, that's still the most gangster shit ever, bro. June 6th, that's still the most gangster shit ever. Black people could not pull off nothing that gangster. Nah, because we, we, we can't be around each other that long. No. <laughs> yeah. No. I gave my dollar to the I was Yeah, that's yeah they, was, they, was, they was too organized. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we organized, bro. Come on. <laughs> oh, we, oh we, we organized, but I'll tell you, bro. We wouldn't have been able to get a, a, a block uh, within a block of the uh, Capitol building. Nah, you, you know his man beside each other. Nah, because okay. you know something about to jump off when it's a bunch of black people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a and you see a you see a crowd of white people with guns in the air. Oh, they're just walking. They're not going to do anything. Wait a minute. <laughs> they're exercising their constitutional rights. More than three black people on the side of the street at the same time. They selling drugs or the other gang. It's a, <laughs> well, it ain't. It's a barbecue somewhere. <laughs> I don't smell any chicken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas out here yeah, doing this shit. Nah, they either bro. going to a barbecue or they're doing a narcotics deal. Let's wait about five more seconds. Yep. Changing that there. Oh, oh, narcotics deal. Shoot him. That was just a grocery bag. Oh, I'm sorry. We out here getting it. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, yeah, like, to your point, I mean, it really, it really was an exciting thing to be able to go to, like, the landmark now. It's like, all right. Yeah, yeah, it was. But, you know, I guess, I mean, you know why? Because we was teenagers, and we didn't know what the real world was really like. Mm. Yep. Blind eyes. Yep. They got it a lot yep. sooner than us because they got it with these phones and it's right in their faces and everything. Oh man! Right. Remember, if we if we had a bought if we had a bought a cell phone to Holland Springs, we might have got kicked out or at least three days in the street off dick. Can you order things for Wednesday? Yes. Once I get off my phone, you can have my phone. Remember, um, y'all remember when they used to bring in them damn dogs? Oh yeah. To come at to come to the lockers and shit. Yeah, the old drug sniffing dog. The drug sniffing oh, dog. Oh, yeah. Sniffing dog. Hey, look, I yeah. used to always be scared and knowing I had no kind of drugs. <laughs> oh, you dealt with hey. no kind of drugs when I was in school, but I used to always be scared there was no kind of drugs in my life. <laughs> hey, but, hey, but to be fair, them, dr- them, dogs, them dogs was vicious as a motherfucker. They was. The only time I was worried was our senior year because I had a bunch of porno tapes in my locker from Remy. Fucking <laughs> 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 Remy in the damn porno tape. I just didn't want him to find that shit. Motherfucker was so many and so organized. That, shit. <laughs> that nigga had his porno tapes color coded. One section got red tapes, then got orange. Oh, I ain't never <laughs> seen nobody with so many porno tapes and so organized with them. Yeah, that was the only thing I was scared of because I had a bunch of porno tapes in my locker that I was kind of low-key dishing out on the side. He was massive. Remy was the coolest motherfucker ever. Oh, we'd be in the back of Popeye's watching porno. <laughs> we supposed to be making we supposed to be making chicken and we watching somebody get dug out. <laughs> yeah. Bruh, niggas would go on break, get a plate of chicken, mashed potatoes, a chicken strip or something like that, be in the back, watch <laughs> just, just watching somebody just give some sloppy toppy. And Remy's sitting uh, back there laughing. Y'all boys, man, that wasn't me, man. That wasn't, you know, that was my thing, man. 
Shit, nigga, I was watching, man. Right? <laughs> hey, he gonna deny the shit. Uh, hey, we used to make all kind of concoctions in that joint with the fucking food, bro. I miss Popeye's. Oh, man. I'm gonna eat it down, bro. I'm sick of it. Oh, man. Shit. I remember the time one time your boy got topped off about that back there in the back of the store. Oh, what time? Lord. Boy, you about to get your phone. Blah, 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 Oh, well, not, just, uh, I would not incriminate that himself. <laughs> uh, uh. Sean used to pick up biscuits off the floor and put them in the box. No, I did not. <laughs> All I'm going to say to this, people, be nice to fast food people. I was a kind soul. You will not. Me All I'm going to say is be yeah, nice. Be to, other than a kind soul, man. Be kind to fast food people. To this day, I am not I am not funky with no fast food people because they handling my food. And you don't know what the motherfuckers could do to your food. Supposed to do that anytime. Yeah. If I'm gonna cuss you out and you handling my food, it's because I'm cussing you out and I ain't playing no eat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we was at Popeye's, a girl that used to work there who had got fired. She came through the drive through cussing everybody out, cussing everybody out. And there was a biscuit face first on the floor. And and one per person who was working drive through I ain't going to say no names. The person, but it wasn't Sean. It was not Sean. Yeah, don't put me in. No, but I'm not going to say no names, but it was not Sean, and it was not me, because I only cooked the chicken. I ain't worked the registers, no. But there was a biscuit face first on the ground, and who, the person who was working the drive through picked the biscuit up, no gloves on, and the manager looked at it and, and shook her head yes to put that bitch in her box. And as soon as she handed her, as soon as the um the the person working Hang the on, register handed the girl the box of chicken, the first thing she did is open that box up and took a bite out of that biscuit. We all ran to the back, dying laughing. <laughs> Y'all are terrible people. Y'all are terrible, sir. Oh, you didn't do it, but you were there. <laughs> sir, I was not there. I had no control over it. You have to understand. I was an immature, fifteen or sixteen year old at this time. We were sixteen. We were seventeen. Yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> he's a nigga, whatever age I was. Oh, I was too. <laughs> but that's why I say, people. Where's his other fucking shoe at? Be kind to people who handle your food. But or at least, or at least, if you gonna cuss them out, man, don't order number two directly after the shit. No, don't do that. Nah, man, like man, cuss them out there. Yeah. I just had and this is a this is this is a public service announcement from the fun bunch, mm-hmm. okay? But anyway, fellas, oh, um, I got all my DJ equipment. I was I was uh, uh got the software on there last oh. night. I was I, I was jamming, just learning the software. Oh boy, bye bye bye. You ready? You gonna DJ this party? Yes, sir. Up? Yes, sir. And, right? and I, bro, and I got me. I, um, uh, I went to uh, I was at Wayne Crib yesterday. And I got like uh, five thousand songs off him. Shout out to DJ M. I do. I got. Yeah. I got. I got songs for every occasion, nigga. Every occasion. Yeah. Huh? Nigga just got grand parole. Oh, I got a folder that says trap music, bro. I'm ready. <laughs> I got a folder. Literally, I got a folder that says trap music. I'm ready. I'm ready. I had the shit hooked up in here in the crib last night. Was getting that shit. I got the Southern Soul, the R and B, the uh, um, the hip hop. I got the 80s, 90s, 2000s. 
I even got Hispanic. I even got a folder of Hispanic music. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm bro, I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. Yeah, that's gonna go jam, bro. Uh, uh we can get live and not too live around here. But I got you. <laughs> I don't want them to be like, oh my god. Yeah, just you, you let me know the tone of the volume. That's that's good, you know. But I'm ready, bro. Only thing I'm gonna need when I get there is I'm just gonna have to connect to your Wi-Fi, and I'm good. Oh, you know we got all I know that. All right. Yeah. Are you on your way to yeah, I gotta respect my neighbors. You know what I'm saying? I don't respect the dudes because I want them to respect me. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was gonna get live over here before because some little motherfucker right, right here stealing shit out of mailboxes. Oh. oh, Lord. You had a porch pirate? Oh, no. Oh, Lord. Boy, I wish I would have seen that. It would have been kind. Yeah, what the, the, do Chris from Friday that used to knock over the trash cans? See, but I got to make sure it's foolproof because, you know, if you don't have all the evidence. Oh, they coming with their lawyers. Yeah, so, you know, and I had to get foolproof. But, you know, I was out there watching, you know, crazy. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. sleep, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I don't sleep. I got some cameras. I know that's this right. Just already, but, yeah. But anyway, fellas. <laughs> I'm going to get on the body here because actually what I'm going to get out here and do is I'm going to go bang. I'm going to go learn this equipment some more and start banging this shit out. I had to play this shit low last night because I had to respect my name. It's, 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 three, it's 315 right now. I can go a full blast right now. Can't nobody say shit. Hey, he just said <laughs> he got to go learn this equipment and bang it out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Bang. <Yeah>. Get out. <laughs> Bang it out. <laughs> oh boy. Well, fellas, I will hit y'all up in a bit. All right. All right, bro. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. All right. Brother Sean Cutting David. I swear, man. We the um. We, we the fun bunch, we the goof troop, whatever you want to say, you know. We get serious when we have to, but we prefer to just be silly. That's just us. And um, I'm going to make sure that next week, um, and, or, or maybe I may do I may do a Sports Plus Life Talking-ish hitting my man Tony up because I want to thoroughly go over these NBA playoffs with Tony because um, the Chicago Bulls are in the playing game. So I may do that tomorrow, not sure. We'll see. But um, before before uh, we wrap up, I want to shout out the Yukon Huskies, the Yukon Huskies men's uh, basketball team. They won their fifth national championship Monday night in a game where we were hoping that it would be competitive, but not really. I have to say this. The women's tournament this year, the women's Final Four in particular, was so much better than the men's, with the exception of San Diego State's game against Florida Atlantic. That buzzer-beating shot, the buzzer-beater, by San Diego State, but once UConn took the lead and around the 12 minute mark of the first half, you know, they never relinquished it. San Diego State made a small run in the second half to get the lead within five, but UConn was just dominant. They were dominant the entire tournament. They won the game by what, 17 points? Their their uh closest their um closest margin of victory through the whole tournament was 13, 13 points, which was done in the national semifinal game against Miami. They were absolutely dominant, and UConn. So with all of the, the um, the nuttiness of the Final Four, with it, you know, really being no blue bloods, a bunch of new bloods. But at the end of the day, a blue blood hoisted the national championship trophy, and UConn is a true blue blood. This is their fifth championship since 1999. I remember all of those title teams: '99 team with Rip Hamilton, Khalid Alamine, Ricky Moore. Um, the 2004 uh, squad with Emeka Okafor and Ben Gordon. Let's say a prayer for Ben Gordon. That he gets, he's going through some, he's going through some things. Let's let's pray for that brother. But Emeka Okafor and Ben Gordon and Josh Boone. And I remember the tw- uh, 2011 national championship team with Kimbo Kimbo Walker and Jer- Jeremy Lamb. That was the final four that VCU was in, oddly enough. And then three years later, Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright, their national championship team of 2014, to their fifth. Uh, in 2023, 
and uh, uh, those guys, Dan Hurley's the coach now. Um, they are honestly the best college basketball team dynasty, if you will, in the last 25 years. Because when you think about it, since 1998, no team has won more national championships. You got UConn with five. Uh, you got Duke with three. You got North Carolina with three. You got Villanova with two. You got Kentucky with two. This is just off the top of my head. Um, you got Florida with two. Uh, this is this is really strictly off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, no team has been more dominant. And with that being said, with a buzzer, with a buzzer, with a buzzer. Okay, again, I hope everybody had a wonderful, fantastic Easter, and I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed week as well. It's springtime, folks, already, already. And I mean, I swear, again, I will say it again, and I'll say it a million more times. Nothing moves faster than time. I promise you nothing moves faster than time. But yeah, like I was telling Sean and David, <clears throat> I'm about to go downstairs and rock out with this equipment some more. DJ Brave Easy, a.k.a. DJ B Too Nice, is in effect in the building. I'm fitting to be y'all favorite, y'all favorite DJ, because I'm definitely going to be affordable. I'm not trying to, you know, win no, be scratching records and do all that stuff. I ain't trying to do all of that. No, I'm just trying to play some music, have a good time, make some money while I'm doing it. Just a little side hustle and outlet, um, a hobby. Um, but I've been... I've been doing DJ related stuff in my own time for a very long time since I was a kid. So why not? But again, don't forget to hit that subscription button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family. It's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. I'm out this beer. Peace. And I love you.